you've got to have the pills, haven't you? Yeah, it's like having a pair of shoes with no laces otherwise, isn't it? We tell people we play, play in a heavy metal band. <laughs> In King's Nympton, two years ago, we were down to our last four ringers uh, and the bells were not ringing on a regular basis. I was persuaded to learn how to teach and I put out an appeal for bell ringers. And over the last couple of years, we've had 32 people come through the tower and have a go at ringing. And out of those, we now have 12 new ringers. So in total, we've got, count it up yourself, <laughs> 15 ringers. I think that's right. Could be 16. Well, I started, I think, about three and a half years ago. Um, I saw a flyer in the pub in the Grove. We've lived in the village for about 18 months now and I probably started ringing about six months after we moved here because I was aware that the ringers were asking for uh, new recruits. I've never rung bells before, I had no idea how difficult it was going to be and uh, I've become thoroughly hooked. I blame it all on Kevin Fisk, 100% it's his fault. Um, he forced me into it last Christmas and I didn't want to do it. And as soon as I'd started doing the bell ringing, I've just not stopped. It's fantastic. Just really got me. So I took up bell ringing about a year ago, I guess. My wife was doing it and was really keen on it and said it was a great way of getting some exercise and being a part of a group of people who had a sort of common aim and were getting better together. So I took it up, uh, my daughter's also had a go, she was 10 when she first started and probably the youngest person, one of the youngest people they've ever had ringing here. I've always loved bells, obviously we're Australian, and Darren said, we're coming to Devon, let's get into bell ringing. I thought, okay, <laughs> and I thought, well, that won't take long, <laughs> that'll be quick. Boy, it was, <laughs> it's the hardest thing I've ever had to learn. I took up bell ringing for all the wrong reasons. I'm a medievalist and an art historian. And I thought, I'm always looking for things that I can do which will take me, draw me closer to how the medieval mindset was. And so I thought, oh great, when we moved to North Devon, I thought, fantastic, we'll take up bell ringing. For me, I think one of the things that really appeals is when you go and look in the bell tower, there are these fantastic old certificates and old photographs of the old bell ringers going back to the 1930s. So, you know, nearly a hundred years of bell ringing represented in there. And of course, it goes way back beyond that. It's the only thing that separates us from every other bell ringer in this tower for 350 years or so is time. It's time. It's all it is. Yeah, so it's part of a wonderful tradition. If you look in the tower at King's Nimpson, you will see that the, the teams co consist of Bowdens, Westercocks, Lakes, Gills. You ca just can't imagine that the bells have been here for that long and for so many years that uh, they've been ringing and different ge you know, generations of families that go through doing it and it's just well, keeping up a tradition really. Stuart was a ringer. He's the grandson of S.R. Bowden, also a ringer. And R.J. Bowden was his father. He started about 14 years old. Um, and when I knew him, he was quite a prolific ringer. Yeah, so that was his, his side of it. Isn't that fantastic, just to be part of that tradition? And there's a city gifts up there for 1925, isn't there? And the, the ink's nearly faded and we're still doing it all these years later, it's fantastic. The church wants the bells to be rung. And, and the village wants the bells to be rung, which in many ways is the first uh, battle to be won. Uh, you hear lots of stories of people complaining about the bells being rung, 
uh, but we don't we don't get that in King's Nipton. They're very supportive of us. I think it's part of the oral sound backdrop to to, to village life, and I think on. Sundays and perhaps to a lesser extent on Thursday nights when we practice and destroy people's peace. Uh, it's, it's an important part of um, the, the village soundscape. I think it's a massive part, a massive part. I've only been here a year, haven't I? And I worked here for a year previous to that. And I just think it's a massive part of village life. We've run for three weddings um, this year. And it, I have to say they have been for, for the band of ringers, a particularly joyful occasion. When we got married, it was lovely to hear the bells for our wedding, because that is part of it, a big part. As well as the Sunday services, uh, um, we do special Sunday services like Plough Sunday, Harvest, Easter, and of course Christmas. Um, but as well as that, as that, we have taken part in the, the nationwide commemoration of the 100th anniversary of Armistice Day, for which the bells were muffled, which is a lovely, a lovely sound. And hopefully next May we will be taking part in the 75th anniversary commemoration of VE Day. Certain moments are used in quality of time. The bells enhance quality of time. The, the village will be, whether it's Christmas Eve or Christmas morning or something really important in the village or something really a national thing like, the, like an armistice. I hope we never have to have one of those again. But just to contribute to that quality, to let the bells sing out. Mm. Well, it is about the ringing, but and going to church, but it's the you know it's all being friends together and and enjoying it. Yes. The, the great thing about ringing is that anyone can be a ringer. Uh, you don't have to be musical. I don't know why people think you have to be musical. You really don't. It helps you to learn how to be part of a team, and that is the great thing about uh, bow ringing. If you don't follow the bell in front, or if you mess up, the whole thing goes fut. Because when you actually get working, the little flickers that we get working, ding, 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 it's just, it's just glorious. It, it requires um, mo motor muscle memory, uh, and that takes quite some time to develop. It, it also requires a uh, degree of, of mental agility and concentration that frankly, and I'm a bloke so I can only do one thing at a time, I find really quite hard to master. I, I, well, I've been a, a musician all my life, rock drums, which is this is in the other end of the scale. I don't know, it's just the, 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 the camaraderie, the, I, I get involved with the technical part upstairs as well, it's just the whole thing, it's the whole package. And the lovely noise it makes as well. I'm not saying bell ringing is simple, but I think we've all proved that within a year you can get to a level of competence that means you can do it and, and feel proud about what you achieve. It's lovely, it's nice to see people come in who maybe before they moved to the village didn't have any sort of knowledge of bells, let alone any desire to, to ring. And I think it's just at the moment it's the incomers who are you know, the, the most uh, enthusiastic amongst us. It's great, yeah. It's a, a huge, unsubtle, very loud musical instrument. Um, and when you make a mistake, the whole village is suddenly aware of it. The corollary of that is, of course, when it goes right, it really can sound extremely beautiful. For me, one of the really great satisfactions is the, the feeling of group achievement when as a, as a ringing band we do get it right. It's a team sport. It's, it's joyful to be part of a team, to actually create one sound to be part of a team. Because like the thing when it works, well it's like any band, yeah. when it works there's, there's something that goes beyond just your bell ringing, it's actually, it lifts up a notch where the whole thing comes together. When the bells were rehung in 2000 whatever, they were very short on ringers. So Stuart, Brian, Stan Broom um, involved some of us and they said, well, you ladies can ring. And I said, well, women don't ring. 
at King's Nympton, it was sort of an all male team all, all its lifetime. Stuart was one of the ringers, he was the captain as such, and he was um, my husband's uncle. So after one night at the pub, Stuart persuaded me to go up and give it a go. So I went up, um, I think there was three or four of us ladies starting at the same time. First of all we just had to pull the bells down and then we started ringing around and then all of a sudden they started doing the changes. So yes, so it was all good. So that was how I got involved. Oh it's brilliant, especially like ringing my dad's bell because I felt close to him in a way because I you know, think, well yeah, dad used to ring this one and, and I know he'd be so proud and chuffed to think that I'd carried it on and, and rang his bell as well. Especially when I was going wrong, I could hear him say, Car, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, no, I could definitely feel close to him there. And he'd been ringing for years, really enjoyed it. I remember Dad saying that one of them was ringing and um, his trousers fell down and of course because he was ringing he couldn't stop to put them up. <laughs> so I think that there was a bit of a bit of an eye opener shall we say. <laughs> Weddings and that especially they used to enjoy because they used to enjoy like a drink during it. We weren't ringing then Jill and I, it was before uh, but the boys were ringing, you know Brian, Stuart, Fred, but there were six of them and that someone had left some um, spirits in the belfry for the ringers to have. And of course spirits is a lot more stronger than the beer, but I suppose they just had a, a quick sip or two or three. And, and then they thought they would, the, the wedding ceremony was lovely. We all watched it and that was lovely. And then um, afterwards they thought they would bring a peel again. And of course they must have had another one or two sips or maybe three. And then, <gasps> We were outside and oh, the ringing was oh dreadful. So, so we rushed in. I think it was my mum actually that went up and stopped them because they really were making rather a din. So she went up and pulled a plug as such. It said, you boys put the bells down quickly. It's sounding all over the village so awful. So, so they did as they were told and, and that was okay then. I don't think they probably ever forgave her for it, but I think the village thanked her for it. <laughs> now it's more girl power. As a teacher, I love to see these people and their confidence growing, and I love to see how happy they are when they do their first Sunday ring, for example. But very great excitement. Wow, she's very powerful and she's very leading. It's, it's great. Yes, very great. I think she's amazing. Yeah, she's got the patience of a saint and so much drive behind her, which rubs off on everybody else then. So no, it's good. She's, yeah, she's amazing. One of the really notable outcomes of uh, Josie's evangelism for bell ringing and her incredible enthusiasm for teaching is that uh, she has pulled together a really quite remarkable band of essentially most of us beginners. This year with a lot of urging I was persuaded to enter a team into uh, the local novice bow ringing competition. The first time Kings Nipton had fielded a team for what, 80 years maybe uh, and we came forth. It was great, what a result. Don't ask how many teams we're in it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a it was a great feeling and you know, I think everyone enjoyed it. There's probably a degree of amazement and perhaps even jealousy um, on other towers because some of them, a lot of them, struggle to put together teams at all. We have more ringers than we have bells for them to ring. So we're essentially on a rotation program so that we uh, all of us get a reasonable amount of ringing time every month. It is, it's a cultural tradition where one steps into the river of this 
cultural thing. And then eventually we will step out and we'll die or we'll fall off the end of a cliff or something. But we'll, we'll be gone. But this tower will keep ringing. It's, it, it has to be kept going, doesn't it? It just has to be. And it's, and it's pulling people, as you say, from all different walks of life, all different ages, all doing this. We have a laugh as well. It's, it's, it's a great bonding thing. I think it's great, and uh, certainly in comparison with other towers, I think we've got some terrific youngsters coming on, and I think, you know, there's got to be a succession for the whole thing to continue in the way that we all want it to. There are a lot of towers, not just in Devon, but all over the UK, that have fallen silent, and I, personally, I think that's just a, an absolute tragedy. There are people uh, here, not just the bell ringers, obviously we have a vested interest, but people here who don't ring, people who don't come to church, still regard the bell, regular bell ringing here, as being a really valuable part of, of, of village life. And I'm sure, sure it's great for the village to hear it happening. And that they're just gently in the background while they're watching some rubbish on telly. There's something good going on over here, you know. Yeah.